glad to be hosting this panel discussion today. In order to keep up with our topic of IoT, we decided to dwell uh, into the matter of IoT and how to, um, sorry, how our uh, panelists develop their products within the IoT field. It is my pleasure to have specialists from different uh, spheres of telematics, uh, such as uh, connectivity, hardware providers, uh, system integrators, and software developers. With no further delay, allow me to invite on this stage Yesinta Vietanagi from Cloud AP, covering from Sajiva Kure. Yes, Next, we have Michael Shakal from Pod Group. Mantas Unitas from Sensata. Abrar Parker from Quicklink. Juan Miguel Samano from CTT Max. And Sergei Kostenka from Violon Product Team. Oh, no, 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 let me sit there. Sure. You can sit here. Perfect. Dear guests, thank you so much for joining me on this stage. Um, just to begin, I will be grateful if you can share with the audience a little bit on what IoT products do you specialize in. Yeah? So perhaps Abrar could start us uh, off. Perfect. Uh, I hope you all have already attended the presentation which I gave uh, earlier uh, in the morning. So at Quicklink, we are specialized uh, in designing IoT devices. Uh, so it's, it's like a different verticals that we uh, uh, have in place. So it's like different SBUs, like transportation, wherein we have uh, vehicle tracking devices, uh, fleet management devices. Then we have uh, asset and mobility, wherein we have rechargeable, non-rechargeable uh, vehicle uh, uh, asset trackers. And then different other SBUs, like uh, video telematics. Then we have in place, uh, say, uh, low power IoT devices when we cover the Sigfox and LoRa devices uh, and we are also falling into industrial IoT uh, wherein we have uh, 4G routers, industrial routers and soon we'll be having 5G. So like at Quicklink uh, we have a plethora of devices to offer in the IoT domain. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mantas, would you like to? Uh, as uh, Sansata we are producing sensing technologies mostly but for this auditory uh, we are producing fleet management systems, asset trackers, uh, also what's new would be soon presented its tire pressure sensors, and uh, probably this is the main products what we have okay. for, the fleet, for the telematics industry. Perfect, thank you. Yesinta? So uh, we have Heze, which is um, integrated with VLON and FlashP, and uh, so with this application, we allow uh, um, people to connect uh, like uh, various devices, mm -hmm. and uh, it could be uh, <coughs> uh, the GPS devices that we see, and also we uh, we we make custom devices uh, based on uh, the requirements, and also we allow uh, customers to bring in their own custom-made devices, uh, probably machinery, so some uh, uh, device that they have. Uh, uh, created uh, to uh, meet a specific requirement of an organization. So this is what we do. Perfect. Thank you. Michael? Thank you, Karina. Well, we're a pod group, a executive reference company, and we are your enterprise network operator. We enable you to own your own mobile network. That includes the same technology that enables you to configure it wherever it goes in the world, one platform that enables you to manage it, and one network with more than 600 operators on it. Thank you. Juan Miguel. I'm Juan Miguel from CTTMX. Uh, I think the most important um, IoT for us is a, a special industrial things to our customers. We develop custom-made uh, services based on the, all the data that we can get from the IoT devices. Perfect. Sergey is covering VLON team, so yeah. how do we see ourselves in IoT? Uh, can you hear me? Actually, uh, actually uh, I guess uh, that uh, our main product is the one that 
unites uh, them all. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the uh, ecosystem, this is the universal ecosystem for monitoring and managing the connected assets. Uh, why this is not just a product but the ecosystem? Because we, uh, we, bridge, we bridge different hardware manufacturers, different software manufacturers. Uh, we allow different services in terms of the connected units management to our customers. And we allow different partners to build their solutions on top of this ecosystem. That's why this is called ecosystem. We like, try to provide the whole spectrum of uh, services and uh, lay the basement for that. Uh, and all these companies are our dear partners. Uh, they somehow interact with us, build their own solutions to, to, our, to our end users. And that's why we actually, this is our job, to make it easier. Exactly. Great. Thank you so much for your answers. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about the specific requirements from your clients that you're working with. So my next question is, uh, what solutions are most frequently requested from your customers? So if no particular order, maybe uh, Juan Miguel could answer first. OK. Uh, now, since three years ago, they, in our country, in Mexico and in, in Central America, the crime is uh, hiding up. And the most uh, services or the most specific needs from our customers is anti-theft, mm -hmm. uh, anti-theft solutions or anti-theft devices. And we base the, our services in a really good um, data connectivity uh, partner and different devices. And the most specific, uh, we try to, to know the customers, know the needs, know the em environment about the transport and we mm, recommend the, the, the best solution. That, I think that's the, our, our key point for, for us. Perfect. Michael, what would be the most common for you? Sure. Well, actually, our, our customers are looking for a long-term partner in data connectivity. They're not just looking for connectivity. They're looking for someone that will help them solve the issue of fragmentation, the wide range of devices, the right range of connectivity that is out there and how to manage it, how to, be, how to mitigate the risk for the future. What happens when a device or a connectivity no longer works in a certain country or if the regulator restricts roaming, for example? So with our solution, our innovative eSIM and eSIM applets, our one network that includes multiple, six, more than 600 networks, operators, we are able to do that. And more and more importantly, we don't do it for our, our customers. We enable them to do it for themselves. They own the network as a service. Perfect. Thank you. Jacinta? Uh, it, it depends. So we get uh, uh, requirements about like people tracking, asset tracking, both the stationary or moving, and uh, building uh, utility uh, management, and uh, uh, also uh, logistics, call chain, and all. Uh, so uh, <coughs> we we uh, we work with different platforms uh, and also different backends to. Uh, bringing this da data onto uh, like meaningful data on Hazel. So uh, we had some requirements uh, where like uh, some uh, people wanted to connect uh, uh, devices from things network. So mm -hmm. we managed to do it within uh, like three hours, like connect, putting together three different uh, platforms and uh, uh, create uh, the dashboards and the reports they wanted uh, uh, within uh, uh, few hours. Uh, so uh, I see like it's, it's also about connecting uh, devices and connecting different platforms and then uh, the telematics that data that you collect from all these sensors and all that uh, to make it uh, meaningful for your business. So uh, I think this is the main requirement at uh, the mm -hmm. end of the day. Okay. Montes? Uh, it really depends on the market from which customers are asking, but uh, still the basic tracking is a tendential and it's moving to the more advanced, maybe I can tell Canvas solutions more and more customers are trying to, to implement to their markets because markets becoming already and uh, vehicles becoming more newer even in the growing markets. 
Uh, another tendential I can tell that probably most of the time everybody wanted to track the moving objects like vehicles, tractors, trucks and uh, now there's a huge demand for the asset trackers and people tracking. Uh, that gives a lot of efficiency uh, for the business. They can save a lot of money in this part. Uh, and if you speak about more advanced solutions, uh, there is demand in some markets for the video telematics, uh, ADA systems. Uh, probably that's, that's it. Perfect. Okay, well, um, I must say that at QuickLink, uh, we have a tagline, uh, Driving Smarter IoT. So we always make sure that we have a unique uh, product portfolio for the market. And you know, you have been seeing that I have been hyping more on the uh, different widespread product portfolio that we have in place. But I personally believe that the major traction of the overall product portfolio that we have is taken care by, like the revenue stream is more uh, you know, pushed by the uh, fleet management devices. Uh, which covers, I would say, uh, devices with canvas capabilities, uh, you know, devices for UBI, uh, like insurance telematics. And at the same time, um, there is demand for um, asset tracking devices. So people are moving towards uh, asset trackers with the built-in temperature sensor that what we have in place. And um, several other asset trackers which have battery life, say we have certain asset trackers which can last for up to 10 years battery life. So I see um, the demand is um, more for advanced uh, the telematic solutions uh, in the market. So that, that, that's how it is. Perfect. And Sergey, um, do we have any statistics of which ones are more popular I think the VLON? Yeah, I would agree with my colleagues about these advanced solutions. Uh, at VLON, the, the um, major primary focus is on transportation telematics. Because this is uh, where we have the biggest expertise, I assume and the like, biggest success history. So we have, uh, according to our data, we have about like 50% of our, of our units, vehicles connected. They come from the cargo transportation and 30% uh, are passenger transportation. Uh, so like I see 80% are like transportation companies. So this is our, our primary focus and this, this is where we try to uh, provide the condition monitoring, not just on simple GPS tracking, right? But just condition monitoring, condition of the loads of the vehicles themselves, automating some business processes in fleet management domain. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, the, the major focus right now. Of course, we have uh, some growing segments and some growing uh, demands uh, for different like, equipment, equipment monitoring, different stationary units, like personal tracking, and so on. Uh, that's why in, in Gurtan we have a portfolio of uh, products that actually can uh, uh, add on to this, uh, uh, to this value and uh, provide services for personal tracking, which is GPS trace, my colleagues will speak later about that, and FLESPI, which is the uh, universal uh, telematics data processing system. Uh, but for real on, yeah, transportation. Perfect. Hmm. Thank you. Um, now, this were, of course, the most common requests, but as we know, the world is not perfect, and sometimes we get rather unusual requests from the end customers, and both system integrators, hardware developers, they all need to adapt to that. So my next question is, how do you deal with non-starting requests which are coming from your customers uh, within your company? So perhaps, Abra. Okay, uh, well, uh, we often get IoT requests from customers uh, which is definitely unique uh, mm -hmm. to their business. And I, I must admit to the fact that uh, customization is uh, one of Quicklink's biggest capabilities. So, uh, you know, at QuickLink, uh, we have around 65% uh, employees which are engineers, mm -hmm. and that's what I was hyping more uh, throughout the day. So what we do is uh, we have extensive uh, experience designing chip-level technology solutions, uh, which allows for greater customization for our customers. So, uh, and also, when, when you're talking about customization, it's not only about, uh, like say, making uh, or tweaking the firmware or uh, tweaking the IOs of the device, but it's uh, all about devising a product right from scratch. So for our customers, we usually act uh, or play a role, uh, more of a strategic advisor, I would say. Uh, wherein we like propose them IoT solutions which are unique to their business and also we make sure that the customization we are doing, it's not only meeting their uh, current uh, market needs but at the same time it is future proof. So if you will see like uh, say 20 or 30 models on QuickLink website or any, ma any marketing material that is published, I would say there will be equivalent number 
or probably more than that as customized devices that we are offering to our customers and that's that's the reason i said that quicklinks uh, that customization is one of quicklinks biggest capabilities and that's what we are doing so we have devices uh, you know designed and developed right from scratch for our customers across the globe yeah perfect thank you yeah. mantas uh, at the moment, we are covering most of the demand uh, for and all, almost all the sectors. But if there are requests for new products, of course, we are like a multi-billion company and can build from scratch it. Together with that, uh, we are implementing tools for our customers to do them customization by themselves. Uh, I'm speaking about the SDK software development kit where customers can write their own scripts inside and we are not involved in that. So our customer, customers helping for themselves to build a product. Perfect. Yes, Yinta, would like to answer next? Yeah, so uh, we have our own development team. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we can, uh, we are able to customize the software and also uh, we make both uh, proactive and reactive solutions. Proactive, uh, we will learn uh, the requirements uh, while we speak to uh, other colleagues or like uh, customers or like what we get there, um, from like internet so we make proactive solutions to keep up and also we make reactive solutions where you learn some requirements from the customer and then uh, uh, like develop it fast so um, so apart from that Heza is uh, actually it's it's a uh, you can configure it on the fly like you can make uh, the dashboards as you want for data, data visualization and then you can um, connect um, uh, the devices, custom-made devices, so like um, the popular telematics as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so with uh, the integration with FlashWay, we are able to uh, uh, like uh, do the uh, PV, uh, the message passer to uh, get uh, the custom devices or the sensors on board and also uh, we like to work with uh, open standard hardware where it will support uh, extensive uh, uh, programming like SDK and also we'll uh, uh, look at interoperability with the other sensors so in future we can probably use the same devices uh, to connect uh, more sensors or to create more scenarios to uh, uh, meet the future demands. Perfect. Michael? Karina, none of our customers order a standard product. <laughs> it's all customized. That's because their, their devices, their networks, it's all uh, fragmented. And yet, it, it's actually, we, uh, we, uh, and yet every, uh, it is our role to provide an agnostic solution. And this is what we're doing with the Eno SIM. It is one SIM, and yet it is programmable remotely over the air and we have one platform to manage connectivity from all over the world the key is though these unique requirements we keep getting in also spur us on to innovate and develop new technologies so for instance Eno one sim is one of them but also in the EMEA lock so fraud what of people removing sims from devices is an issue <clears throat> by locking them to the device we prevent that this is a work in progress and will be released very soon the other is being able to remotely configure or do sim provisioning without sms increasingly devices don't have sms capability and we are developing a solution which should be ready by the end of this quarter Perfect. Juan Miguel? Um, I don't remember when, when was the regular request for our <laughs> customers. Most of the customers, as Michael says, most of the customers, they have a special need. And most of them, they said, don't share with anybody else. <laughs> Confidential. That's, <laughs> that's the reason we, we have to create a R&D department. Uh, actually, 30% of our companies are R&D. We have to visit customers, we have to live with the customers, know the needs, and after that, we put, put it all together, and that we 
after that, we're able to deliver the, the special needs or the special custom project for, for our customers. I think that is the root of our, the, the company that, that I represent. Perfect. Everything is special. <laughs> Sergey? Yes, we, uh, we have a big, big pool of partners uh, on, on, in the world, and that's why we definitely have a lot of non-standard requests coming from, from all over the place. Uh, we try to like try to uh, group them into several, divide them into several groups. Uh, the, you know, the first like is uh, when partners actually try to uh, partners or end customers are uh, trying to uh, ask to add something in the product uh, that is that is not there. Uh, this is uh, this can be good for for the use case. This can be good for the industry. This can be good for this niche. Uh, it can be specifically really good. Uh, and uh, for these cases, we try to, uh, we always, uh, uh, yeah, we, as my colleagues mentioned, uh, we have an API that uh, actually uh, every partner who has some development experience can use to, to uh, change uh, a bit the product, change the logic, to up update it, to uh, better adapt to this non-standard request. Uh, so like, uh, this, is a very, this, this is a very good uh, idea to, to use uh, in case you have some non-standard requests that are basically not going to appear in the product uh, in, in the next, uh, in a couple of, I don't know, in, in the next times, yeah. Uh, we, also have a, we also have such uh, requests that, uh, that, uh, uh, that partners do, the, they can do themselves, and they, can, uh, and they are trying to promote it. And that's why we have the marketplace in Wheelon, which, I, uh, we, 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 which we'll be uh, developing soon, uh, like, and, and are developing that, but uh, we'll probably focus more on that. So that we have a lot of uh, solutions that uh, actually can fit different different niches, and the partners can promote. And uh, uh, we welcome you guys to uh, to take part in that marketplace. Contact me in case you, you have something to to market and uh, spread within the our partners, because we are really interested on, in growing our ecosystem. Uh, we also have some requests, as uh, my colleagues mentioned, that uh, really inspire us to get some new features in the product to develop them. Uh, this is really good. good some, it, can, it can sound non-standard, but when we you know, research into this, we will see that there's a niche for that. There's like a business opportunity. We can add these features, and many products in the world appeared from that, and some features in Realon. I probably tease that uh, soon we'll launch a product uh, which will uh, uh, manage, which will actually provide some capabilities in terms of leasing control, which also came as a, as a request one day. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, of course there are some like groups of non-standard requests. Also, we thought about that. Uh, that actually uh, highlights some problems in our product. That partners and customers asking us uh, like for something that is already there in the product or that they are not using correctly. Uh, that's why we have uh, our wonderful customer support team and the, the 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 guys there that actually can process these requests understand if where, where is the problem, is, is it in the product, or is it uh, somewhere in the, in the way the customer uses this product. And, uh, yeah, and set it up uh, for, for, to improve, like, improve this, the, the way that the customers use, to introduce some best practices that actually are there in, in, our, in our product and in the system as well. Perfect. So we've got, we got some insights as well for future to look into, yeah? yeah? Uh, <laughs> thank you. So. We all understand that obviously market develops extremely rapidly and every single year we have new solutions coming out. Um, so my question, next question is, how do you determine uh, your next steps for further developments within your company? So what steps do you do? Or what, uh, in general, how do you determine what to do next? I believe Sergey already answered briefly in his previous question, so uh, perhaps you can uh, continue uh, this topic. Uh, yes, we definitely, when we're looking into, uh, into uh, the future, we definitely have, uh, we, ne we have to actually, you know, look into all the chain of events, mm -hmm. you know, all the chain of uh, who uses product and in which industry and how. It's a big product, big, big market. We have to use on the end clients, the partners, uh, and uh, at our own interest, you know. So uh, we definitely try to interrogate, our, we ha have a like, big uh, research team uh, with researchers, analysts, and product managers who are doing this, all these researches, uh, exploring the market, talking to our partners. That's why actually we're here today and in JIDEX. Uh, and uh, yeah, and definitely try to, try to understand the trends in the market. And finally, we're looking into our metrics within the product. It's also very important to understand 
how actually the global ecosystem is using Wellon, what is the insights out of it, and what can be improved to ensure the further efficiency. Perfect. Juan Miguel? Um, I think the, the future for us is the industry 4.0 and uh, artificial intelligence. Actually, we, we believe that if we put it all together, will be the, not the future, just the present, because everybody wants to know how, where, and, and what is the result we, we, we mix it or we, we put it together. We are developing a lot of things with uh, artificial intelligence uh, applied to agriculture, um, water meters, uh, industry, industrial process, for example, the, when the meat processors or when the growers in our country, we are putting um, artificial intelligence in the driving behaviors and the growing behaviors of the plants and the irrigation systems. And we believe that is the, the future, put it all together because there is a lot of data when the IoT and somebody needs to process and analyze. And I think we are ready for, to do that. Perfect. Michael? Serena, without a doubt, it is the challenges that our customers have that spur our innovation. And so, and often it's not it is out of their control and out of ours, but we need to innovate to find solutions. So for instance, some countries have, some countries' regulators have restricted their connectivity to permanent local native roaming. And so it is our role to identify and build partnerships with native uh, operators so that our customers can benefit and meet those regulations. Another one is the vast increase in, in the benefits of NB-IoT, except this NB-IoT has hardly any coverage in the world, a little in uh, some spots around the world, and it's taking forever. And yet, as I mentioned earlier to our, one of our colleagues here, that uh, we have signed up with a satellite operator who will be able to provide NB-IoT connectivity worldwide, uh, even in the Sahara, even in the jungle, in the Amazons. They will have NB-IoT connectivity. And NB-IoT particularly is very useful, very useful for remote sensors because they consume very low battery and they're left remotely um, and it's actually a very good uh, scenario there. Um, so, and we're, we're there, we are spurred, so to summarize, we're spurred by the, our, our, our customers, but yet it is our role to kind of leap ahead and think what may be useful. For instance, I spoke of earlier of having one platform, one pane of glass to manage all the SIM cards and connectivity, but here at this event, I'm also planting the seed for maybe joining the Wyland platform with our pod IoT management platform. So from one platform, with the Wyland platform, not only will you get location, but you would be able to manage your SIM card connectivity. This is just an idea, but this is the way we are thinking ahead of the needs. And um, I'm confident it will have a good reception. Great. Jacinta? So uh, obviously we have uh, our own uh, r and and also uh, it's uh, like uh, for us in our market, IoT is new, so nobody's going to ask for, I, I want IoT for this, so it's uh, about like um, we study this, um, the, the problems that we have right now, uh, um, where we see, and uh, also uh, working with different partners to uh, learn about uh, uh, the way things are done in different regions. So we try to um, make his a, a broader product where uh, it could be uh, customized for a very specific uh, requirement. Um, for an example, um, so uh, we, we had uh, a request to monitor uh, machine hours and then calculate idling and then report uh, f failures and all that. So uh, where we had uh, with Hazer, uh, you can customize all these reports, uh, the, the way we visualize the, the sen sensor uh, information and uh, analytics. So uh, we were able to uh, uh, carry the system integrator 
uh, without uh, much customization. Uh, I, I mean, in the like code level customization, but uh, uh, change in um, uh, the the way the data is presented to the end user and also. Uh, uh, creating smart rules for notifications and all that. So we try to make uh, the HESA is uh, like sort of a, a broader platform uh, where it could uh, cater uh, um, uh, f uh, like possible future uh, uh, requirement of uh, a specific uh, need. Perfect. Mantas? I think that uh, in our business, the future comes from requests because you can build a very, very good solution or some device. If the market uh, never needs it, uh, it would be fail in the development and so on. Uh, we constantly trying to ask and discuss with our partners uh, what our requests are coming and uh, what the market require, requ what is the market requirements Usually in this business, uh, there are talks, uh, maybe one, two years about something. And we see that after two, three years, uh, this is uh, the requirement for the market. I'm speaking an, as an example, it was BLE. Some time ago, everybody is tel was telling that, uh, no, no, it's not uh, reliant. Uh, we will use the cables and the, the cables still is, is normal and it will be a f in the future. But as we see, everybody is now using BLE. So I think the future, what could be in near future in our business, uh, that uh, more and more standards will come uh, I'm speaking about communication protocols. I'm speaking about uh, Zigbee. Uh, that would be a new communication options between the devices uh, because more and more devices uh, needs to be connected. And at the moment, and I think in the near future, the development costs will increase a lot. So if something could be standardized and uh, could could uh, give a good value, so that would be a uh, future. Thank you, Abra. Um, about the trends, uh, no. Uh, as I said, that being an IoT innovator and the tagline which I just mentioned a couple of couple of minutes ago, what I believe is that at QuickLink, uh, having three high-level R&D centers in place uh, and 65% of our strength being engineers. So what we do is uh, we brainstorm the new technology trends on a regular basis. So um, every employee has access to the management, every employee has access to the uh, R&D centers or the product managers, uh, and we you know, discuss technology trends on a regular basis. So be it current technology trends, at the same time uh, technology trends which will become advent in the coming days. Um, just to give an example, uh, we knew that 4G devices will become advent in these times. So we made advancements uh, and uh, strategic investment towards this part back in 2017. So till date we have already shipped more than 4 million 4G devices and we are making uh, strategic investments towards 5G and other IoT devices. So that's what, uh, that's, that's the uh, you know, uh, best part about this business. You cannot just rely on certain products which become cash cow for a particular time, but you need to switch and bring in new products and innovate for you know giving and adding value to the community so yeah that's exactly yeah. Uh, need to adapt quickly in that case yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> great thank you so much and, um, of course even the most throughout uh, sorry thought out solutions uh, do not exist in a perfect uh, bliss bubble and sometimes some issues and problems come along the way so dear panelists do you experience any um, challenges when implementing new solutions uh, into the market and if you do what are they um, perhaps <laughs> all the time <laughs> okay perfect uh, i believe uh, when you say challenges mm -hmm. um, challenges are part and parcel of any business and uh, i believe quicklink is no exception to it uh, you know um, um, 
there are there are several challenges that you have to face on a regular basis so it's all about how agile and strong your value chain is how mm -hmm. uh, strong and agile your value proposition is i know these are some marketing jargons that uh, i'm using it but that that's more relevant words uh, to specify the challenges so it's all about your proactiveness to combat these challenges mm -hmm. uh, uh, now just to give you an example uh, the our industry is suffering uh, from the shortage global component shortage issue and um, it has hampered the production capabilities across the globe and the situation was worst few months back but at quicklink uh, we did foresee this coming and having a strong collaboration with our suppliers we made sure that we have enough components stacked up uh, in order to keep the production up and running so this is one of the challenges uh, you know uh, i would say an operational challenge uh, that we had to fix but there are several challenges we deal on a regular basis so be it a special request in terms of solutions that needs to be de deployed as i said quickling in terms of customization capabilities we are doing great then uh, there are there will be several other challenges be it commercial or technical like in certain markets in order to import the devices you need to have certain certifications mm -hmm. and uh, you need to tweak the device structure you need to tweak the hardware in order to comply with the governmental regulation in particular organization that's one part so these challenges are there and there so it's all about how you work how close do you work with your partners in that particular region and I think we at Quicklink we are working with several partners. Same same applies to every uh, partner, everyone sitting here. We have to uh, be equally aligned with the global market players and accordingly take it ahead from there. So that that's how it is. Perfect. Thank you, yeah. Mantas. I agree with that. That uh, the most challenge I think for us as a manufacturer to show the value of our product to the end user. And between end user and us, there is our partners integrators, and uh, we are always trying to educate them as much as possible. Not just sending leaflets, but uh, we're doing trainings, uh, educating them what is the product, what value it could bring, and with help of our partners, uh, we are we are selling these products to the end users and uh, this is i think the most biggest challenge to to educate the end user i think it's for everyone like that at the moment yeah <laughs> yes Hinta? so uh, challenges would be uh, resistance to adopt new technology by uh, the em like employees the uses mm -hmm. uh, and uh, lack of uh, right uh, human resources to uh, uh, take care of the new uh, techni technologies that we try to introduce and uh, also we see uh, the uh, some business processes does not allow to adopt this new technology so this is sad so you have one part automated and then you have manual something done manually mm -hmm. so um, end of the day you don't get uh, the real benefit of the the solution that we provide so we try to um, educate customer make awareness um, uh, write articles about case studies and uh, also uh, we sometimes go to the extent that we do the business processes for small companies where they can uh, how they can make use of uh, our product uh, to, uh, like uh, how they can uh, fit the t this into their uh, business process so um, yeah that's what uh, we do perfect Michael the way we go to market or the way we overcome difficulties in the market, I think would come down to two approaches. The first is innovation in terms of the innovations we make in terms of our SIM, our UICC capabilities, the applets that are added, the functionalities that enable multiple networks to be configured or SIMs to be configured remotely our platform, adding new functionality, and our networks, finding new networks, and all that I kind of mentioned earlier. But I would like to add the other vertical, the other pillar, and that is partnerships. Because it's through partnerships with our customers, not transactions, partnerships. Partnerships with other soft, external software providers, like Wyalon, for example partnerships with 
even within Pod Group, and now it's acquisition by uh, Gizek and Devriant a year ago, we are even stronger. But it is also a partnership. And by being stronger, we are able to meet more of our customers' needs, offer better service level agreements, basically have the financial weight behind us. So I'm all for, Pod Group is all for partnerships at all levels because we can only go forward together. Exactly. I think the, from Valeria's presentation today, the key wording that she said today, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. So Indeed. I think here it, it fits perfectly. Totally agree. Yeah. Juan again? There's a, a lot of cha challenge. I think the, the most important for us now is the chipset shortage. And the, the technology is moving really fast. And the, the big challenge for us is try to convince the customers that the things that they're looking in the movie, there's not happening in the actual world. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is the best, the, the, the main challenge for us. They, they saw a movie in the afternoon and they call us on the, the following day and said, hey, I want that. <laughs> we try to figure out how. And the, the, the other big challenge for us is to try to educate our, our customers how to use the technology. There is a lot of technology, there is a lot of devices, but the customers, the, the, the main user, doesn't know how to use it. And the other big challenge that we're already working on it is everybody provides data, but mm. the customer doesn't want data, they want information. They want an, a, a, a chart, they want an, a, an, a key, key information, they want a graphs, but the data is, is emerging for all, all the parts. I think that's, that's the, main, the main challenge. Uh, translate the data into information, real information. Information valuable to do more, more businesses. And the other big challenge that we're dealing is the um, turn off of the 3G, 4G, in, in some, some countries. Sorry, 3G, no, not 4G. Great. Sergey? Uh, I think uh, the biggest challenge for we alone right now is, uh, and I, I thought about that, this is uh, its scale right now, because we are actually present on all the continents, populated continents in the world. So we have a big network of partners. We have different regulations, different protocols, a lot of uh, different business models. Uh, and in terms of the product development and spreading it further in the market, we definitely, when we're planning some new developments, we need to take into account all these, all these potential uh, configurations that can arouse. Uh, we need to take into account the interests of our partners. And when we do something, we need to check if we didn't break somebody's uh, business process when we, when we in, in, in integrate some change in, into our product. Uh, this is very tricky. We're like, you know, like sappers who diffuse minds, you know, every time it's just okay, if we, if we do something, we roll it out first to see how our partner network can react. And we definitely need to balance the interests of uh, different partners because uh, some of them prefer well on to be simple uh, and so that the new users come and they easily use it. Some of them prefer it to be complex so because their, their business model is based on that, so on, on, on actually providing additional services that actually simplify well on. So that's uh, uh, the balance of uh, balancing between the interests, balancing uh, between the business models, features, and also the technical architecture is, is, is definitely a challenge right now. Of course, we face some other ones in the market. We, we like, see that, that business is consolidating, that only ecosystems survive. That's why we actually, our ma my major uh, challenge and our major goal is not to just, as I mentioned that before, and then my colleagues, I agree with Michael that only together, when building an ecosystem, building, building this synergy, uh, can drive us further. And uh, yeah, we will actually uh, go into the future with protected and uh, with our solid market share. Great. Um, sometimes we all face situations where uh, end customers might not understand the value of the solution. Personally, like in business development, we do face these situations, and this results into constant bargaining or looking forward into the competition. 
So how do you, uh, within your company, how do you ensure that your, uh, your end customer understands the value of the product that you bring to them? Maybe Juan Miguel can start. <laughs> Different order. <this> time. <laughs> Different order. <laughs> we have to mix Finally. it up. <laughs> Finally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. When we, we start the company, uh, all the customers uh, ask us, ah, uh, how do that? What happens if I do something? What happens if I turn off the, the, the GPS? What happens? And we start developing in a post sales department. And now, uh, half of the companies in the post sales department, in support department, we teach the customer how to use the Bylon platform. Actually, we only use Bylon platform since more than 12 years ago. Uh, we teach them before we install the first device in, if, if it is a new customer. Mm -hmm. We teach them how to use it, how to exploit it, and how to apply the information in, in, in their business. Uh, when something new arises, we do a campaign to inform the customers. Now, all the tickets that we received, is they, they, they want to know more. And we, we're happy with that because if they want to know more, that is a signal that we're doing the things um, better each day. Uh, at the beginning, we, we detect that as a, as a weak area in our company. And we put it all together, or, you know, all the knowledge together, and now is a, the strongest uh, department in our, our company, you know, the, the support and post sales department. Perfect. Michael? Sure. Well, I'm going to say data connectivity, data connectivity, <laughs> data connectivity. Yeah. And that is because I need to capture people's attention. Uh, I think one of the main challenges we have is that. We, there is information overload. There is information distraction. We, and too often, customers and us have too many distractions and we need to focus attention. Learning, because the technology is changing all the time, we need to learn what is next available, what is, what is the solution, and we need to be open to that. And I feel that to be able to achieve that, I'm going to go back to the relationships. It's, un it's impos almost impossible to do that on a transactional basis. We need to build the relationship, the relationship of trust, whereby we will give each other enough attention to understand each other's requirements and grow for the future, not for the short term. And I feel that POD, I'm very proud that being part of POD group, because we are forward looking, we are offering an agnostic solution, we are mitigating the risks of the future by developing a solution that our own customers can manage as their own as, as a service. So uh, to summarize, I would say again, relationships, to focus attention, to get and achieve long-term solutions, viable solutions. Perfect. Yesinta? Yeah, so uh, what, what we do is, uh, again, like we make our product uh, um, like more compatible with uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. So then we don't uh, have to uh, charge customers for uh, customization. We try to make it more generic uh, where the, the customization that we do is uh, more compatible with uh, a lot of uh, requirements. So. Uh, this way we can bring down the cost, uh, I mean our cost, where we can offer it to the end user, where they can get uh, get uh, very economical rates. And we make it also same for the integrator, where they will have uh, uh, room for more margins. So this way um, we try to uh, make customizations uh, as much as uh, possible and more generic, where more people can use it. Um, so this is what we do. Perfect. Um, I think it's it's great to build a product that uh, it speaks for himself, but we still don't make a robots. So we do trainings for the customers, and I think the most good education is uh, to be together with them uh, in the meetings with the end users, 
and show business cases how was how this product impacted another another regions another businesses what was other projects so they can see the value and like these pure leaflets are just marketing material not always enough for that so it's content uh, constant speaking with the partners and customers uh, is the best uh, education. Perfect. Brad? Okay. Uh, you know, um, I have been mentioning that at Quicklink we have a very widespread uh, product portfolio and as Michael mentioned that there are a lot of distraction. So it's all about how accessible your information is. Mm -hmm. And you know, at Quicklink we make sure, uh, me personally being in sales, we make sure that we have bi-weekly or monthly uh, meetings with the customers, there is a regular chat, there is regular dialogue. So in order to educate the customers about the devices that we have in place or the solutions, uh, along with the FA team, because I believe the technical team plays a pivotal role in driving uh, the uh, solutions uh, in order to, to the customers. So um, the FA teams, they usually like are in constant touch with the customers' technical team. So we make sure. So at Quicklink, we have made sure that our customers have access to the technical team directly. So they are welcome to discuss anything pertaining to our solutions or any technological trends that are happening uh, you know in the industry uh, just to give you an example now uh, our technical team um, works with client base across the globe mm -hmm. so there will be instances wherein a customer in the middle east is asking for a particular solution which is already being implemented say in uh, north america or, or or in europe so we bring in the global expertise for the customers uh, you know across the globe uh, you know it's like uh, uh, think globally, act locally. So that that's how it is. Um, so we are in constant uh, constant touch with our customer, making sure that they are well aware about the devices. Um, you know, these days one one blessing I would say that uh, COVID has given us is that we are uh, virtually more active. Uh, mm -hmm. We are conducting more webinars, yes. uh, making sure that we bring and we come to the customers with the new solutions or new trends uh, in the industry. So yeah, that's, that's the positive changes that are happening. Um, yeah, that's it. Perfect, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And Sergey? Yeah, um, speaking about value, we have uh, the teams, uh, like business development guys, uh, customer support that actually, who's, uh, whose actually purpose is to explain the value to the, uh, to, uh, to the end users, to the partners. Um, but uh, in, a, in, a, in a product team, uh, the, the biggest metric for the value, like if, if, if our end users are getting this value, is their engagement in the products and in the special functionality modules and so on. Um, I spoke about that on, on the previous uh, presentation in Vilnius, that engagement is a key metric for us. We, uh, we understand, our, our understanding is that uh, if the users are using our product, if they're using this uh, functionality, they're getting some value out of it. Uh, of course, the, the, uh, the scale of this value is, is a different story, but the first one is engagement. And that's why uh, under-engagement in a certain modules is a pretty like, serious problem. We, we treat it like, uh, as an alarm that uh, some users and some end, end users, uh, different businesses, they're okay with GPS tracking, they're okay with fuel monitoring. But for some reasons, they're, not, uh, they're struggling with uh, uh, driving, driving safety, for example, mo module, or they're uh, struggling with video monitoring or technical maintenance. These are all parts of fleet management and we definitely want to bring value to that. But if they don't use that, that means that they don't get value out of it. So this is a problem in our, in our modules. We, we try to, to, to tackle these bottlenecks, we try to analyze data, see what's wrong, get some interviews, get some uh, researchers, probably build some experiments and changing something to, to raise this engagement. And then uh, if we see that it, it works, then definitely the value increases. And it's, it's easier for our, our colleagues to explain it. And uh, finally, all these, all these features, they must actually uh, definitely convert to some business, uh, business, uh, val business value, like business benefits for the end users. That's why we're, uh, we're trying, now we're, we're actually in our product trying to calculate this business value, trying to, understand, uh, trying to say, hey guys, this is, this is a number of, this is the amount of money that you're gonna save with fuel economy if you use this module. Or this is the amount of uh, traffic accidents that you're gonna avoid if you use video monitoring. Of course, based on the statistics, based on the data, this is not just simple, simple numbers. But when users see numbers, see, see the money, it's easier for them to actually get on the solution and uh, compare that with uh, some other competitors. 
So showing, showing the impact is very important for, to explain when explaining the value. Great, thank you so much. Uh, we're moving to our last question because we're almost running out. I can see Kevin is showing me already last question. Um, so um, just let's talk briefly about future. So um, as per your opinion, what is the future of Telematics as part of IoT industry and what trends should we look into? So perhaps let's start okay, with Okay, fine. Kamrad. For the last time, I'm the first. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Uh, well, uh, the future is bright and limitless, I would say. Uh, being in sales and always on the ground, interacting with several stakeholders, um, what I can see that the industry is becoming more organized and it's shrinking in terms of the players in the market. So it's all about the power of sustenance in this kind of uh, changing market environments. Uh, you know, uh, more and more countries are uh, having economic region in which they are undergoing infrastructural developments and they are investing highly on something that is termed as uh, smart cities mm -hmm. uh, with less human touch. And that, that's something that is happening. So that's totally aligned with their economic vision. So this is something that is uh, there now. Um, you will see more and more governmental projects that is uh, coming up. Okay, so that's a good sign for the industry as a whole. Uh, also, uh, you can see that there is a lot of transition happening from 2G to 4G devices. Uh, more and more people are adapting, more and more countries are adapting to uh, the 4G network and five, people are discussing about 5G and other technologies in place. So that's one of the uh, you know, key attributes that will be driving uh, the industry trend. Also, uh, we should not uh, overlook the advent of AI uh, mm -hmm. into the industry because that is going to be something that will be driving the um, uh, you know, overall IoT trend and it is going to be uh, a pivotal uh, thing uh, that will be, you know, uh, that will make sure that your product is strong and viable enough. So how, how as I said, how uh, agile you are in terms of your solutions, that's there. So overall, the booming trend of our industry is going to continue, okay? There will be a lot more demand for, say, um, uh, advanced fleet management devices, mm -hmm. including the uh, devices with canvas capabilities. And uh, again, 4G devices and 5G devices and other, other IoT devices uh, in place. So I see, yeah, the trend is going to be good and it is, it is going to be booming over the years. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Mantas? I think even current products are moving to the future. We are removing the 2G from the market. Uh, standard products are upgraded to the 4G and uh, 5G is coming. Mm -hmm. So we will have capability for way, trans way faster data transfer. Uh, everything would be connected to the 5G. Also, when we speak about custom development, I think there would be more standards. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would be more tools to do it because more and more uh, uh, devices are coming to the market and uh, at the moment it's a little bit mess of these accessories and everything. Uh, you need to buy different devices to connect them, especially different software systems. So I think future would be more standardized and more and more regulations will be coming. Perfect. Jacinta? Yeah, so I think it's, it's limitless. Like it, it, uh, I use like some sensor to detect uh, uh, like it, it's a smart uh, uh, mouse mouse trap. Mm -hmm. So, like uh, for me, I think it's uh, it, it. This comes from uh, making your living experience better. So, I think we can look into uh, many areas, and then we can think of how we can convert this to IoT. Uh, could be buildings, utility, point train, uh, people movement tracking. So, um, like. So many ways of uh, making your life experience, living experience better. And as um, uh, experts in uh, IoT sector, we can uh, look into uh, many areas where we can find um, uh, ways to uh, connect uh, uh, sensors, devices, uh, or like uh, using image pricing to uh, and OAI to uh, uh, make our uh, make uh, into uh, like. Uh, new business horizons. Mm -hmm. Great. Michael? Karina, the future is now. We are here. We have together, all of us, 
are building one huge machine of the future. This is the stuff from the scientific movies that they watch in Mexico, that we all watch too. <laughs> and it is our responsibility, all of us, to make it a secure, huge machine. It is huge. We have to make sure we can switch it off when we need to. Otherwise, if it falls in the wrong hands, it can be detrimental. So security is high on our agenda, pod group as being part of Gizek and Devriant. Security from fraud, security from illegal use is a high priority for us going forward. You may or may not know that our mother company, Gizek and Devriant, are the suppliers of the eSIM in Apple's iPhone 14, something we're very proud of. And together, we are continuing to set the standard in UICC SIM technology development, but also connectivity, and most, most importantly, going forward to the future is security. Great. Juan Miguel? Yeah, the, the future is here. I think the big challenge is put it all together easy to understand because nobody can have now everything in the palm of the hand. I think that is the big, the big challenge because, for example, with our customers, they have a lot of sensors, a lot of devices, a lot of platforms, but I think the, the future is everything needs to be talking to each other and understood, understood each other and easier to read it, easy to 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 give orders and receive orders. Because now we have to do a lot of things in, in so many different platforms, so many different devices. Mm -hmm. And so and we have to translate. Thanks God, it's Flespy because <laughs> we use it. But I think everything needs to be interconnected and everything, everything needs to be talked each other and understood each other. I think that's the challenge for the, for the future. Because the future so, is now and tomorrow will be the future also. So the future is to <laughs> overcome the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Sergey? You know, I can just sum, sum up what was said because it was said pretty, pretty, pretty much and pretty profoundly. Uh, yeah, I, I see that uh, telematics will, uh, will become like 100 widespread, meaning that every hardware which is now manufactured or will be manufactured in a couple of years will be connected. Every hardware. Uh, even probably some softer things, I don't know, like my clothing, whatever, jackets, uh, whatever, trousers, they will be definitely connected. Uh, so we can expect that telematics and all this uh, IoT thing, uh, IoT uh, technology will go into, into particularly all the material products. Uh, so 100%, it, it will definitely open up some opportunities, but it, it will also uh, provide some threats that we see that after, uh, that. Uh, uh, market will not be growing anymore, <laughs> actually, because you know it will reach its uh, its like 100 percent, and uh, all fleets will have telematics. Uh, all fleets uh, will understand uh, the benefits of it, and, and, and it will just simply uh, the fleets without because fleets without telematics will simply lose and die out. That's it. Uh, so the market will be fully with telematics. It's going to be faster because of the 5G, all this stuff, 6G. You know, like in Jitex, it's like 6G, Pavilion, <laughs> really. Interesting to, to see what they have. Um, Starlink uh, and so on. Uh, it's going to be smarter because of the artificial intelligence. Uh, and uh, I would say, like, uh, artificial intelligence is not just, just the, you know, uh, just a fancy word. It's uh, really, it's going to become not only just uh, used for data analytics and prognosing. AI will become a real business companion for the fleet managers as well as for other countries, uh, other com companies. So the companies will not be competing in what hardware they have, who has the best, better hardware, like better trucks or whatever. They will compete in who has the better AI. So this is also uh, one side of uh, what we will expect us, and we definitely have to be secure with that, because we don't want Skynet to repeat and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, but yeah, it's limitless. Yeah. Great, indeed. Well, we, it's the uh, end of our panel discussion. I think we 
did it just on time, so perfect. Oh, uh, dear colleagues, thank you so much for joining <laughs> me on the stage. Oh. I believe everyone who's in the audience and who's watching us via stream have enjoyed your insights and uh, expertise on this matter. And just one more time, thank you for our VLON community thank that so allows much. us to have such a discussion and exchange the knowledge and help others also to get some inspiration on how to grow their business. Thank, thank you so you. much and let us enjoy thank the rest you. of the thank event. You. Thank you. Thank you.